sector, we want to look at Kenya's pension industry. We all know that you can't work forever. In Kenya, the official retirement age is 60 years. It was increased from 55 years back in the year 2009. And uh, this is proving to be a daunting task, especially for the National Treasury, because every year it is spending around 170 billion shillings, well, around 150 billion shillings, you know, paying out retirees. That is significant investment there. How many thicker roads can be constructed using that amount of money? Well, quite significant. Uh, so we want to look at Kenya's pension industry and we're asking ourselves, how has it been impacted by the COVID-19 uh, pandemic? How is it uh, being in, in, in affected by the ongoing global commodity crisis, the depreciation of the Kenya shilling, as well as other challenges? Well, Mr. James Wanyama is the Executive Director, uh, Institute of Pension Management. He's joining us here in studio to help us with this conversation. Mr. Wanyama, thank you for your time. Thank you very much, O'Brien, for, uh, <clears throat> for this session. So good, uh, good morning, viewers. I'm James Wanyama from the Institute of Pension Management, and I'm here to shed more light on the pension industry and generally what's affecting the industry and how well can we navigate uh, the challenges very good so when i want to uh, dive into the deep end and i want to find out from you uh, how what is the shape of the kenya as a pension industry as we stand thank you very much in terms of uh, the assets uh, value instead of in terms of the asset value of the pension industry we are at 1.3 trillion shillings uh -huh. that's very huge uh -huh. That's very huge. In fact, if you look at what the pensioners can do with regard to the projects of the government, yeah. it can be a lot. And that's one of the areas that we are looking at and uh, mobilizing and looking at the private-public partnerships yeah. in the way in which this pension industry can be enhanced. But you um, maybe just to mention that that 1.3 trillion, mm -hmm. it can actually be more than that. Because currently only 22% of uh, the employed mm -hmm. are actually contributing to this to this port. 22%? Yes, of the employed uh, uh, people. So you have about 78% of, of yes. employed people who are not members of any pension scheme? Absolutely. So uh, the question is, how, how do you deal with such a tremendous amount of apathy? In fact, uh, at the Institute of Pension Management, what we are doing as a training in, uh, institute is to sensitize the public on the need to enhance their savings. Because you realize that people, as much as people will talk about investing or uh, starting a business, you may say that I want to start a business because the business will enable me to prepare for my retirement. Uh -huh. But at the same time, you also need to uh, save for your retirement. You know, you will not work forever. Yeah. Today you have a lot of energy, but come 20 years, 30 years time, you find that your energy will have uh -huh. uh, slowed down. And that moment you do not have enough energy to generate income. So what we're advising uh, the public uh, through the institute is um, we advise them to save for retirement. Let's say, for example, if somebody tells you that they want to invest in a business, for you to start a business, you must have the savings. Uh -huh. So in other words, these savings that you are using to generate that income to have or to invest in a business will also generate you some income, which now you need to, to invest. And that investment is where now we say uh, we advise the public that now you need to invest that in a pension uh, scheme mm -hmm. or a pension plan. Mm -hmm. Reason being, the kind of lifestyle that you're leading today. Yeah. You may, um, when, when you're looking at your future, you're looking at it and saying, will I still maintain the same, the same lifestyle? Mm -hmm. Will I still have the same car? Will I still be able to fuel? Will I still be able to get food? Will I still be able to go on holiday? So in that regard then, we are looking at, are you able to sustain that beyond the employment? Now, uh, apart from that, if you look at the economy of Kenya, yeah. majority of uh, more people contribute to the economy are the informal sector. <coughs> informal sector. Mm -hmm. So we have the Juakali people, they contribute up to 34% of the GDP. But yeah. now, if you look at this population, and they're not able now to save, they're not saving, and remember they're doing Juakali, will they do Juakali up to 90 years? They won't. Up to 80 years, they will not do that. So then, we have options for pension whereby we advocate for people now to save uh, and we have a lot of flexibility nowadays. 
We have plans that allow you to save even uh, 50 shillings, 100 shillings every day yeah. through a phone, which is now the kind of flexibility that we are looking for. Mm -hmm. So we advise the, the, the public to be able now to look at what is it that I will need to do to ensure that I'm able to sustain my lifestyle. The one I'm having today, will I be able to meet it in the near future? And, and, and the fact of the matter is, I mean, as you age, yes. Um, your capital expenditure, mm. you know, goes up because exactly. um, at some point, you know, you have uh, diseases kicking in, sure. and so you require medication, mm. you require medical review yes. um, uh, quite often. Yeah. Uh, and now that you're not working, then mm. um, uh, you, you have a significant burden. And so, with this kind of knowledge in mind, mm. so how comes seventy-eight percent of Kenyans do not have any pension a plan? Well, in terms of um the uptake of the pension plans, the reason has been that even the employed category, for them, they focus on the government, the NSSF. Uh -huh. But you see, if you look at the NSSF, you're only contributing 200 shillings. Plus the employer, it comes to 400 shillings. Yeah. So 400 shillings in a year, you're contributing up to, uh, close to 4,800. 4, yeah. Look at 4,800 in 30 years' time. It's, uh, it's actually close to around 150,000 thereabout. So if you're only getting 150, <coughs> sorry, you're only getting 150,000 at the end of your retirement, then how will that amount help you to, to sustain yourself? So it, it's but an issue. this money, you, you know, there yes. is the accrual of, of interest. Yes, the accrual interest. Of, yeah. So at most, you're looking at maybe 300,000 yeah. or 400,000, mm -hmm. which cannot sustain you. Looking at um, the kind of economic, um, the living standards that have gone up, you find that you not be able and to sustain that. And when you factor in inflation, yes. which is likely to eat yes. into the uh, interest that Absolutely. you earn, mm. then uh, you might find out that um, you are in the red. Exactly. So and apparently, and apparently uh, just to mention, when it comes to even the NSSF, people are not conversant that even the NSSF that you're looking at, at the end of your period, and that's now for the employed, by the time you, you, you actually retire, that NSSF... It has been a, there has been a challenge with regard to even the you know, payment. Yes, the payment. Mm -hmm. So people have been uh, dying without even accessing that payment. Mm -hmm. But then, today as an institute, what we are doing is uh, we are partnering with uh, the Retirement Benefits Authority just to have sensitization to the public on why, apart from the NSSF, we have other pension uh, schemes that allow you now to contribute as an individual. Uh, employers also have their own employer pension schemes. So once you join your employment, you find that uh, there's a particular percentage within which you contribute to your scheme. At the same time, also the employer contributes. So that means your contribution plus the employer's contribution are put together in a pot, which now enables you to access that money after, after your retirement. Mm -hmm. But apart from that, there is an opportunity uh, under the regulation for you now to have additional voluntary contribution. That means as much as your employees are uh, submitting 6% and yourself 6%, 6%, you have an opportunity to even contribute 10% uh -huh. of your gross salary towards the pension. Uh -huh. Now, what will happen is this money will, will be uh, put in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an investment uh, channel as per guidelines by the BA. So through that, your money will be gaining interest. And by the end of the period that you are retiring, your money will have grown the fund value will have grown significantly, and that will enable you now to, to meet your, your retirement uh, uh, benefits at the end of the period. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Institute has, uh, we are running programs. One of them is, uh, we run a program called uh, Fast Check Training. Mm -hmm. Fast Check Training means that the moment you got employed, let's say when you got employed at the KBC, that's the, the time that you started your journey to retirement. Yeah. That's what, uh, how we are encouraging the public, uh -huh. that that's the time that you started your what? Your retirement. So, but, so yes. what I'm getting from you is your first paycheck, yes. you should start planning for your last paycheck. Exactly. How do you do that? Now, uh, there are ways in which you can do that. One, the, currently the employers, the employers have their own schemes. But if you find yourself in a scheme whereby the, in an organization where the, the employer does not have a pension scheme, what you need to do is we have different options, the various individual pension plans which are available in the market. So what you do is now you can contribute directly to that 
without necessarily having to um, to wait for the employer to do that. And as you do that, you find that your money will be gaining. It will be compounded. At the end of it, is, it gets now compounded. That's what the kind of uh, communication that we do. Mm -hmm. At the same time, uh, the institute, maybe just to mention, the institute also trains trustees. Now, trustees are the people that are entrusted to manage the different schemes, both public and private, within the industry. Uh -huh. So what we do is uh, we enhance their capacity in terms of how are they supposed to ensure that their members get the right information with regard to when they need to start saving, when do, uh, which sort of investment are they looking at when they um, interact with the fund managers. So all that is now also one of the roles that the institute does uh, to just enhance that capacity building now to the trustees because you find that the trustee role is not a full-time employment. Uh -huh. So you'll find that um, trustees are employ employees in an organization. But now this is an additional role for them now to safeguard the interests of their members by ensuring that the funds are safeguarded and are invested in the best uh, interest of the members. You, you talked about the issues of um, you know, payment of retirees. Yes. And this has been a challenge, especially yeah. more um, in the public service, where sure. you, you have many employers failing to pay um, retirees mm. upon retirement. Mm. Um, how can this be well addressed? Uh, thank you very much for that question. Actually, uh, the problem of uh, payment of retirees is a very serious issue. And it has escalated to an extent whereby most of the retirees end up uh, not living to benefit from, from that, that kind of uh, benefit. Uh -huh. So what we are doing is uh, through partnerships and also through this sensitization, yeah. we are also informing um, uh, the employers who are now the sponsors. In the pension industry, we call them as uh, sponsors. Uh -huh to ensure that uh, they remit the contributions. Because the problem has been that uh, you deduct the contribution from O'Brien, mm -hmm. but now you don't remit that contribution uh, to the custodian yes. for them not to, uh, to link up with the fund manager for investment. So that leaves uh, the, the, a deficit in terms of the fund value that is available. So when people now retire, we are not able to project whether we have the funds now to meet, to meet this. Yet you find that... Uh, uh, once my, my pay, uh, pay slip shows that my deduction was done, but then I'm not able to get that, then it becomes a big problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, we are doing that as IPM alone, but through the regulator, RBA. The RBA. What RBA has done is uh, also to allow the trustees mm -hmm. to communicate, to keep con communicating with the employers to ensure that they remit that contribution. Mm -hmm. And when the scenario becomes worse, usually the RBA now intervenes into now uh, obliging the employer to make the retentions at that time. Mm -hmm. But now on the public sector, what has been happening is um, if you look at the wage bill, now the government has not been able to predict and also to have um, a work plan in regard to how many people are retiring in the next maybe five years. And that's what necessitated the change of the retirement, retirement age, age from 55 to 60 just to give it some allowance for them now to to be able to have uh, that position and there are also conversations to yes. increase this to 65 yeah, exactly of course a lot of people uh, um, uh, you know employees mm. will not mind these yeah they won't but what we we, we are here to realize is that um there is a significant challenge when it mm. comes to meeting pensioners' uh, uh, payment uh, mm. because, um, as I was saying, when you look at uh, the last uh, six months of yes. uh, this year, yes. uh, uh, close to 76 billion shillings mm. you know, has been factored in to pay pensioners. And that is in the public sector yes. alone. Mm. I do not have the numbers you know, for the private in sector. The private sector yes. and, and so that is quite a significant <coughs> amount of money. Those mm. are like how many Nairobi Expressways, almost mm. two. Yes. So how do you then uh, uh, deal with all these mm. and at the same time ensure that um, you also have other votes for economic development? Thank you. In terms of... Uh the aspect of meeting that. What has happened is, uh, if you look at the, we have two major pension, uh, we call them as uh, the pension types. Eh? So we have the defined benefit, uh -huh. which is purely now the, the one that the government has been running, and we have the defined uh, contribution, the DB and the DC. So what has been happening um, from the last 20 years, 
Now there is that transformation into the defined contribution, whereby now we have the employers and the employees contributing. But initially, if you look at the government setup, it was only the government that was obliged now to meet yeah. the, the needs of these this, this retirees. And that's the reason why even the government, if you look at the government, we have the, the public service scheme. It was interesting now to ensure that also this the, the, the superannuation. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Now you have the contribution from the employees as well as the contribution now from, from the employer. Now that way, then you find that this port, the pension port becomes huge. And like now when you're only depending on the em employer to meet the demands of the retirees. I, 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 know, I know there are regulations, uh, there is um, the Pensions Act. Yes. In, 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 in the country that spells out mm. uh, the measures that are supposed to be taken in case an employer does not remit yes. uh, an employee's <laughs> pension. Yes. Uh, but we still have very many number of, mm. you know, very high cases of uh, people who they are retiring but yet they cannot access their pension mm. uh, because um, the employer decided to use their money for other things. Mm. Uh, are you confident that uh, the, re the Retirement Benefit uh, Authority is mm. doing its work in trying to ensure that um, uh, retirees, they get their pension right on time? Well, in terms of uh, the enforcement, what I know is uh, the, the Retirement Benefits Authority has been doing that in terms of enforcing to ensure that this aspect of remittances is put on, uh, reduced significantly. Mm -hmm. And I know quite a number of schemes that have been affected by that. So what they have been doing is to intervene and also they can even appoint an interim administrator to ensure that they foresee that aspect of the transition. But more so, what they have been doing is now to compel, they compel using the, the act to compel the sponsor now to remit that contribution. The, the, the challenge has been that the employer will cite a number of reasons why they're not able to remit, but now they come up with a, a, a payment plan on how they're going to meet the remittances that have not been uh, done on time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's, uh, I can say they have done that, but they can still do more, mm -hmm. especially with regard to ensuring that uh, they don't have to wait until the remittances have piled up. There is a pile up for them now to, to intervene. I think this should be something that is continuous mm -hmm. to ensure that we don't have to wait until the amount is so huge for them now to, to intervene. Well, when you look at um, both the public and the private sector, yes. Um, who is most affected by, by, by this non-payment non, non of pension? Uh, apparently, the, the affected uh, The most affected. The most affected mm. is the public. Is the public sector. Yes. Why do you believe it's the case? Um, I think it's because of the... You know, in the public sector, the assumption is that there will be money from the government. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, for them, it's not about meeting the deadline for remittances. But they say that, of course, we'll get money and, and pay this. But in the private sector, you find that um, uh, and, and most of the private sector schemes are actually defined contribution. Meaning, as an employee, I have to monitor my statements. I have to receive my statements to show that this is the amount of money that has been, has been remitted. But now that's not the, the same way with now the, the public sector because the public sector, as I've said, most of them and uh, most of this, it is through the NSSF. Yeah. Uh, it's only recently that now we are having that change from the people now not looking at NSSF as a safety net for them when they retire. And that's why now we are having now the new schemes uh, coming in place. The superannuation. Yes. Yeah. Um, now, you, you, you know, you have three categories of employers, you know, within mm. the public sphere. You have uh, the national government, mm. you have state-owned enterprises, yes. and then you have the county government. Yeah. In these three categories, mm. um, who is worst affected? I can say the counties. The counties. Yes. The counties are the biggest culprit. Yes. The biggest How culprit. bad is the situation at the counties? You know, with the, the counties, and, and right now we have uh, the CPF, the County Pension, the county fund. pension fund. Now, the County Pension Fund, uh, the, the challenge that they have been facing is they inherited the areas from uh, the municipal the council, the county councils. And people who retired during this transition period, you find that now they are supposed to be paid the amounts or their benefits from, from the CPF. But if you look at now the current one also, you find that the people who are contributing now to this scheme are also reduced because if you look at the county governments, most of the staff are not 
contributing also to this to this fund because now, of loss of faith yes because of that so then it li- it leaves the the fund to be under underfunded and that has a very very adverse effect now in terms of sustainability mm-hmm. and ensuring that um, when people retire are they able now to have uh, their benefits ready mm-hmm. yeah and so how do you deal with this conundrum in a situation whereby counties county employees mm-hmm. are becoming hesitant mm-hmm. to become members of our uh, CPFs mm. uh, and on the other hand mm. counties they need more money mm. from contributors mm. in order for them to meet uh, the needs of those who have retired but it's not coming it's mm. not forthcoming mm. so how do you get out of this kind of a quagmire I think in terms of uh, that quagmire you find the county pension fund has been having a lot of uh, interactions with the county governments, mm-hmm. the uh, Council of Governors and all that, to ensure that they're able now to enhance the sustainability of their fund. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I may not clearly give a uh, very authoritative statement in regard to that, because w- what we've been doing as an institute is just to sensitize uh, the members across on which, which are the best options to do that. Mm-hmm. But I know the CPF have been doing that, inter- uh, a lot of interaction with the, the Council of Governors, to ensure that they beef up that fund. Mm-hmm. Yes. So after counties, um, where do you move to next? Is it the national government? Is, is it state-owned enterprises? Uh, we have the state-owned enterprises. Those state-owned enterprises, because of uh, their schemes being defined contribution, they have actually been able now to meet those challenges. They have been able to overcome the challenge of uh, having to be undervalued at the end of, underfunded at the end of the, the retirement age. Mm-hmm. So most of the the parastatals have actually uh, adopted schemes that are managed very well. And that aspect of managing them very well is that they have a full uh, board of trustees. Now, the board of trustees is now in charge of ensuring that the funds of the members is invested in the right uh, uh, channels and also is, uh, they keep on to, to look at what are the best ways in which these funds can be. Uh, can be funded. And at the same time, the trustees are the ones that are now propelling the information to the members on, uh, if, for example, if I look at by the next 30 years, how much money will I have from the fund? So because of that, if I'm able now to see, if I'm able to project and see that in the next 30 years, this is the amount of money I'll have, for how long will that money sustain me after retirement? So the, the, that's the kind of uh, engagement that they're doing. And we are doing that through the institute to ensure that they uh, communicate that information to the members. And also as we do the member education to them, that's the kind of communication that we are, we are doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it working? It is working. How? It is working because um, there are certain funds or there are certain schemes that have realized an increase in the contributions. And the reason has been that people are now uh, informed on why additional voluntary contribution will be important at the moment for them to, to contribute at the moment than to wait until they only have five years or ten years to, to retire is when they wake up and say, oh, so I don't have enough money to sustain my, my retirement. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's working, but it's very slow. I want to say that um, um, through the interactions we've had with the government, through RBA, we've been having these consult- consultations and we encourage the government to um, enforce a regulation like uh, if you remember the NSSF Act of 2013, yeah, it was meant now to increase the contribution to 12 percent. Uh-huh. As much as there has been a lot of litigation around it, which has now uh, put a stop to it, uh-huh. but it was a very, very uh, good, it was a noble idea. Yes, it was a noble idea. It is high time that we review the 200 uh, yes. uh, contribution, yeah, uh, because uh, platform. right now even Unga is not 200 shillings, it's much more, yeah, it's much more. Look, uh, we're having this conversation live from Broadcasting House. Uh, Are you a retiree or a pensioner? Are you facing challenges, you know, with accessing your your, your paycheck? Because actually, that's that's supposed to be a paycheck anyway. That's the money that that is money that you worked for for many years, and it's supposed to help you during your retirement. What challenges are you going through? In which sector did you work in? You can share with me that information, and I'm going to um, pose that question to Mr. George uh, James Wanyama, who is the executive uh, director um, at Institute of Pension Managers. This is a conversation that we're having. I know for sure that um, 
many Kenyans are affected by non-payment of their pension by their former employers. And the question is this, how do we mediate out of this crisis? That's a question that we are facing this morning with Mr. James Wanyama. I want to come back to you. There was a time whereby there used to be a lot of hue and cry mm. that... Um, People never used to get their savings from mm. uh, uh, um, NSSF, mm. the National uh, Social, Security, Social Fund. Security Fund. Yes. Uh, at least these <coughs> days, you don't hear so much of that. Mm. Um, why? Is, is it there or, or, or is there discomfort? That is, is it there what we call the quiet discomfort or the systems have been strained and up? I think the government has made some uh, strides towards that because the, the complaints were just too much. And the strides have been to streamline the process of accessing your, 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 your benefits and also ensuring that your records are proper. We, with the digitization, it has enabled uh, members now to be able to access even their statements. Uh -huh. Today, under NSSF, you can be able to access your statement to just see how much contribution you have. But uh, initially, there was a challenge. Even People could not even know how much they, they, they are worth at that moment. But um, what NSSF have done, and that's also what led to now the introduction of the new act of uh, 2013, was to ensure that uh, they streamline the process of paying out the benefits and ensuring that they have the right information about uh, the members and to ensure that at the payment period, are they able now to access this. And also the government intervened because most of the people that uh, uh, were affected were from uh, the public sector. Tell us this, um, you know, for the people who are watching, what, what, what should you consider mm. before you decide that I'm going to join this pension scheme? Well, thank you, uh, O'Brien, on that. I think um, everybody that has money, anytime you have money, you're looking at what value will this money give me? What returns will it give me? But if for you to join a pension scheme, the first thing you look at flexibility. If I move from one employer to another, will I still be able to access my, my benefit? Will I be able to translate that money or to transfer that money to another, another scheme? That's one of the reasons. So uh -huh. we're looking at flexibility. Uh -huh. It has to be flexible and it should meet the needs uh, of me as an, as an employee. So that's very, very significant. Then two, will it allow me, uh, is that pension plan going to allow me to have, for example, additional voluntary contribution? So I have to look at that. Because I'm looking at how can I uh, develop my funds currently when I have a lot of energy. People nowadays, they can do more than one job. There are people even who work at night. Uh, maybe you finish your work at 5 p.m., then at night you have another, another business. Right. So at this time, when you have the energy, then you can use that, the extra money that you make, where people talk about the side hustles. You're using now that money to save through the, the plan. Because not all of us can run businesses, especially if you're working. Uh, running a business, juggling around business and uh, employment it becomes, it can be very tricky. Mm. So the amount that you get, you can now save into that. Uh, then the second point, it should be easy to understand. The plan has to be easy to understand, meaning yep. I should be able to know that once I join this pension plan, I'm able now to get my statements, I'm able to understand the processes. Uh, and uh, I want to thank the, the, the industry currently because of the industry players. What they have done is they have come up with very innovative ways uh -huh. of people uh, for them to save. You can even now save through M-Pesa. Yeah. You don't have now to go to the bank. You don't have to be uh, through a formal employment. And you don't have to save in the thousands. No. You can start even at 50 bob, 100 shillings. Uh -huh. And that's why even that now tends to focus on the informal sector. So that's your Kali person who is um, uh, working um, and, and making 500 shillings in a day or 200 shillings in a day, they can still save that 50 bob. Because, um, you know, saving, saving is not about the amount of money that you earn, but it's about the amount of money that you are able now to save. Because people, sometimes there's this misconception that for me to save, I need to get a million, or I need to get 300,000. That's not, that's not correct. Because we look at, are you able to plan yourself and say in 500 shillings, if I can be saving 100 shillings every day, uh -huh. how much will that amount to? And if you do that, you may not realize the effect, impact that it will have. But if you do that by phone, wait until you look at the end of the year and look at the statement and you'll be wondered, okay, this, this is the amount of money that I've saved. But if you are waiting to get enough money to save, you find that it will be very difficult for you.
because there are so many things that we we bombard ourselves in in life mm -hmm. and you therefore we are not able now to just say that i'll put this money in my account or i just put this money to uh some people even they'll say that i want to keep money so that i can be looking at it <laughs> Yet we want money that can the temptations of yes. spending it. Mm -hmm. Every very, time you'll be high. yeah, you'll be going to check and and you find that you're not saving anything. And and then, so you, you you can start even by fifty shillings yes. a day, mm -hmm. hundred shillings, shillings, yes, you know a thousand shillings yes. every day if you can afford. Sure. Uh, because if you have to, if you are to save fifty bob, mm -hmm. you know per day, mm -hmm. then uh, that's how much per month. Yeah, fifty around, by thirty mm, comes to fifteen hundred. Yes, you know if you multiply that by 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 twelve, by, by 12 yes, then uh, you have almost uh, twenty thousand shillings. You exactly. know every year. You know yeah. that's quite a significant amount mm, of money. It is. And so if you save that, you know for a period of ten years, mm. so you have two hundred thousand. Yes, and plus interest, mm. uh, you have some beautiful money. You have some beautiful money. Right. Yes. Uh, so yes, now I've made the decision that I'm mm. going to get into a certain uh, a pension scheme mm. uh, what follows next so once you you join the scheme then you now look at what returns does it provide there are so many schemes mm -hmm. some of them so you have to ask the, them now to give you information about what are the returns that you're going to get on the value because you may uh, get schemes that are not uh, giving you better returns but as i've said you're looking at what returns will you have so the good returns is what will drive you into that and you can only do that if you have information now regarding what are the returns that other schemes uh, or other funds are actually uh, giving and also there's a the other factor that i didn't mention was transparency transparency is a very important factor to consider before joining a pension plan just like when you're joining insurance uh, products People have, uh, have had those uh, issues whereby they'll say that we have these hidden charges and all that. So even in a pension uh, plan, you need to know what are the hidden charges. Is it clear? From uh -huh. the time you meet that relationship manager, do they give you the right information so that you don't get shocked at one point when we are told, but when you sign this document, these are the charges that were not disclosed to you. So it's also very significant that we get to understand uh -huh. uh, the transparency of, of the plan. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, how much returns would you qualify to be good returns currently? Um, I know there is uh, the aspect of the inflation. Mm -hmm. And most of the investment um, vehicles that we use, they're also subject to, to this inflation. Yeah. But what we, uh, like you've seen, if, if you look at uh, insurance companies, what they do is they have guaranteed uh, funds or uh, the kind of guaranteed interest whereby well, they'll tell you that you'll be getting this amount of interest on your fund for this for the following period but currently we are looking at um, if you look at some funds are uh, between eight percent others are up to fifteen percent eight to fifteen percent yes how do you uh, get to the one that is giving you fifteen percent now uh, now that that's where now we, you need now knowledge you need information mm -hmm. and that's what the institute does and how do so we're able to give knowledge? you what we do is we gather information about the various performance mm -hmm. uh, levels of the various uh, companies mm -hmm. and the schemes now that's the kind of information that now we share with the members mm -hmm. so that when we come to you for example we tell you that in terms of the performance of the industry these are the leading schemes these are the leading uh, funds fund managers this is how much they're generating this is how much they're giving to to the members so we do that now to ensure that now you as a, a member now you're able to make a decision on which which uh, pension plan to go for mm -hmm. yeah but of course they'll come with uh they are actually out there in the market so they will try to they'll conduct members and they'll tell them what benefits does their plan have over over the other uh, I know, you know, when it comes to contributions, you know, yes. Kenya, Kenyans, you know, they have multiple choices. You mm -hmm. know, you can become a member of a, of a savings um, or what we call circles mm -hmm. or saving societies. Yes. You can opt for um, uh, an insurance package. Yes. You can opt for a pension fund. You sure. can decide to invest your money in government papers, mm -hmm. in the stock market, mm -hmm. in the bond market. Uh, from where you sit or from where you stand, yes. uh, where would you say, where would you advise anyone, you know, from a professional perspective, uh, where they are likely to get better returns? I know that um, that's a question that is also based on other factors. Mm -hmm. For example, the economic uh, performance. Right now, um, maybe in the, in the last few years, there was a lot of interest in property. 
everyone was running to property investing in property mm -hmm. but that has since changed and you find that most of the properties that are people have invested in the the occupancy levels have, have reduced drastically yeah now that changes the landscape now you have to look at uh and people are now looking at the more secure investment vehicles and maybe now they are looking at the bonds but also the bonds are also affected by this the, the general economic performance of the, the 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 country and also the region uh so what what is more important here is to look at the pro the projection now the projection if i'm investing for example in the stock market and I'm able to see that the, the projection of the performance of the stock market, as much as it's affected by the general economy and also the inflation, but you find that at the end of it, my money is secure. And that's the reason why the money that you have in the pension plan or in a pension scheme is protected in the event, for example, even if uh, that company collapses, but you find that under the, the act, even if the, the RBA Act. Yes, under the RBA Act, you find that that money is secure. And like if you invest in a bank today and the bank um, collapses or faces financial challenges, you find that now getting your money becomes a very big uh, problem. Um, well, but of course, uh, it's also good to say that uh, there's also the deposit, um, uh, um, it has changed the name, eh? this, mm. uh, the deposit, I forgot the name. The, the, the circles. No, the mm. one for... Um, for, 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 for commercial banks, mm. whereby you are guaranteed yes. up to 100,000 shillings in yes. case, uh, you know, a certain bank or a certain lender, mm. uh, you know, collapses. Mm. Uh, so, um, between contributing to a cooperative society mm. and to a pension fund, mm. where would you advise someone? Uh, in the short term, I'll advise someone in the circle. In the circle? In the short term. And the short term for you is how many years? Uh, short term is uh, maybe three to five years. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But I'll advise you now to use the money that you're getting from the circle to, to now invest. invest in the pension. Mm -hmm. Reason being, uh, during the period within which now you are in the circle, you're able to access more products. You can get loans, you can invest in, a, you can buy uh, assets. You you're can also getting dividends. Yes, well. you get dividends. So you now use that money, you plow them back now to, to a saving. Reason being, um, right now you can access the benefits of the circle just because of the membership. And at the same time also because of the contribution that you are, you're getting. Mm -hmm. But towards uh, retirement, you'll no longer be entitled to do that. But now the money that uh, you use now from the circle becomes very, very important at that time mm -hmm. of your retirement. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you also want to tell people that um, you know, pension contributions are tax-free? Yes, uh, absolutely. Up to 20,000. 20, Up to 20,000. Mm. In fact, uh, when you look at your gross, for example, the money that is taxed, you remove the, the contribution. The pension contribution. The pension contribution. Yes. Then the balance is what is taxed. And that is something that a lot of people yes. do not understand. Yeah, people don't understand. They do not know. Yes. That one way of legally... Um, ensuring that you don't pay a lot of taxes mm. is by contributing to, to, into to a, a, a pension scheme. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> of course, that is not very good news to the taxman, but hey, that's the law. Mm. Uh, so how do people take advantage of that uh, 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 goodwill from, mm. uh, you know, taxes? Because, mm. and, and, and let's face it, I mean, we all hate taxation, eh? Yeah, of course. Because at the end of the month, when you mm. look at the amount of taxes that you are paying, yes. Of course, it's, it's not a small amount it's of not, money. It's not. But uh, yet, a lot of Kenyans are yet to realize that actually mm. you can reduce the amount of taxes you pay yes, by, by investing increasing. your money in a pension uh, uh, fund. Exactly. And this is yes. up to 20,000 shillings. No, 20,000 now if you are, yes, it's not taxed. It's not taxed, yes. Yes. So in that case, um, what happens is if you need to invest or you need to save, you look at uh, if you are saving with the employer, the employer may not increase their, their voluntary contribution, but mm -hmm. you as an individual, you can opt for that and increase the voluntary contribution. Mm -hmm. That will give you that uh, immunity now from, from the tax. Now, that's an area that people have not uh, internalized, not because they don't know, but because there has been no uh, sensitization to them. 
a lot of people that we meet, in fact, all the forums that we meet as an institute, we have the, the conferences, we meet them for these free trainings on uh, member education and all that. Mm -hmm. You find that they hear that for the first time. So what we're doing is through their schemes, now we inform them that we can provide that information. We can provide that information for them to understand that if your scheme has this provision, why don't you encourage people so that they save more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they can save more so that at the end of it now, that money will, will be compounded for the period that they are saving. And at the end of the period when now they have to move from one employment to another, it comes in very handy. Take a good example of uh, the crisis of COVID. Yeah. And many people lost jobs. You find that uh, during that period, there are people who had um, saved quite a, an amount of money. It enabled them now to venture into businesses as much as the challenge was that now the schemes became underfunded because many people now withdrew their, their benefits at that moment. Uh -huh. But we encourage people that uh, they should be able to uh, focus on that and ensure that their additional voluntary contribution um, is constantly submitted to ensure that they're able now to have a wider, or we can say that a fund that will enable them now to sustain themselves at, uh, at retirement. Because there is a, what we call the income replacement ratio. Now, the income replacement ratio is the amount of income that you'll need uh, at retirement to sustain your lifestyle. And in Kenya, according to the RBA uh, report, Kenyans are at 40%. 40%. Mm, 40%. Yet, the threshold is 75%. Meaning, you need 75% of your current income to sustain yourself at retirement. But you find that the majority of us, we are now below 40%. In fact, the highest are the ones at 40%. Which means that when you retire, you, 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 your chances of us sliding back to poverty... A lot. ...are very, very high. Mm, very high. Very high. There's something else that um, is worth highlighting, I mean... Uh, like when you look at uh, you know NSSF, you know mm. the law talks about two hundred shillings, mm. you know, and then uh, the employer matches the same yes. with two hundred shillings. Yes. But you, as James, mm. uh, can you go to your employer and say, "Hey, mm. I would want to increase my NSSF contribution mm. to five thousand shillings, for example." Mm. Can you do that? Yes, you can do that. You 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 are actually free to contribute that, but what you are saying is. Um, you may, not, you, you may actually add your contribution through NSSF or you can opt to have that portion now saved in another pension plan. That's where now you're so just So which means spreading. that you can have NS, N, NSSF And here, another one, yes. And another, another scheme. pension scheme. Exactly. Now that way, then you are distributing also your risks in terms of the risk. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at, you can now um, uh, save in a defined contribution where now it's also earning you a lot of interest, like the ones that are run by the, the insurance companies. So you'll be having a contribution through the NSSF. At the same time, also you have another deduction, which now you're remitting to, to the under, another pension plan. Mm -hmm. That way then you're, you're actually spreading your in, income in terms of the savings and how that, at the end of it now, you'll be able to get your, uh, your uh, pension from this the individual pension plan and also now from NSSF. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also it's good to tell people that, um, you know, the whole, imp the, the whole point of, you know, first of all, doing a lot of research on mm. uh, the returns you're getting from your pension scheme mm. is because, for example, in Kenya now, uh, the inflation is almost clocking 7%. Yes, it and is. And so if your returns, if your pension manager is, is paying you, let's say, 8%, mm. uh, then you, when you deduct uh, uh, the inflation, then mm. it means that uh, you're getting just 1% mm. on your return. Yeah. Which is not a lot of money. It's not. And, and, and so... Uh, when you are deciding where to invest or in which pension scheme, mm. um, what options are there? In terms of uh, the options for the pension scheme, we have, uh, maybe I can just mention the, the main ones. Yeah. We have the NSSF, mm -hmm. which is now basically that's, that's a government, it's owned by everybody. It's owned so, by members. Yeah, by members. Mm -hmm. Then we have the occupational pension uh, schemes. Uh -huh. Those are now the ones that are run by the employers. So once you join employment, you'll find that most employers have that, that provision. Though not all employers provide pension. But in that regard, then if all, not um, employers are able now to cater for the, the running of the scheme, then we have the individual pension plans. Now the individual pension plans allows you as an individual now still to contribute towards 
towards your, your retirement without necessarily having to rely on on the employer mm -hmm. yeah uh, in terms of um, investment I know a lot of uh, pension schemes you mm. know um, they prefer to invest the, um, the, 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 the their members funds mm. in um, in government papers because yes. of um, you know their risk profile mm. uh, but uh, there has been a major drive you know to try and urge them to diversify mm. you know into 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 in, into more products you know for yes. example you know corporate bonds mm. uh, infrastructure bonds yes. uh, energy bonds and so much mm. uh, but uh, it seems like they are a little bit hesitant why is this the case <laughs> okay now um on that question is about the interest of the fund manager you know the fund manager will also be looking at which uh, investment vehicle shall I invest in mm -hmm. to ensure that I also don't risk the funds and that's uh, an aspect of very co being conservative in terms of the investment but if you look at the RBA guidelines it has given so many options within which uh, schemes can can invest in so what we do is uh, to uh, we now educate the trustees mm -hmm. to ho to get the fund managers accountable in terms of asking them uh, how come you're not investing in this vehicle? How come you're not investing in this vehicle? Yep. So we do that because we, we now invite the trustees for, uh, for these forums. For example, for annual, for, yeah, and forums, annual meetings. Yes. We have forums on uh, investment. Where now we, we bring on board the trustees for mm -hmm. investment decisions. They need mm -hmm. to understand how do they even interpret the reports from the investment uh, managers. Very good. And how um, they question that. You know, I want you to hold your thoughts, Asis. We are bringing to an end our conversation this morning around uh, the uh, state of pension uh, in Kenya, the challenges, the opportunities, and the, what's the way forward. We've been having this conversation with James Wanyama the executive director uh, at institute of pension management before i let you go uh, mr wanyama i want to hear from from uh, there, there are people who are watching and listening mm. to you and uh, they are wondering so what should i do now that i have this information i know now saving through pension is good mm. there are better returns i can get from saving so what should i do next Thank you for that question. Actually, for the public, what I can tell them is uh, the Institute has a, an array of uh, opportunities for them to learn. And we run, actually, we have a school. We have a school of management. Mm -hmm. And in that school, we run short programs that enables people to just to get knowledge and just enhance their capacity in terms of uh, what investment opportunities can they look for, how they can save, which opportunities can they look for, and uh, generally, we're also looking at how do we build saving culture at the lowest level. So right now, we run the programs, even uh, the certificate courses, diploma courses, and higher diploma courses for people who have just left, who have just joined um, tertiary institutions. So we have a college that, through that, now we, we, we impart that kind of knowledge at the earliest uh, time possible. So that when this person now finishes college or campus, they're now able now to think of how well can they invest with the little amount of money mm -hmm. that they're getting. So okay. I'll uh, advise that uh, if you have any yourselves, I want to call upon the public that they can access our programs because the programs are online. It's now easy for you to gain that kind of knowledge and that kind of information so that you make informed decisions. Very well. Yeah, all the way from uh, the young people who we talk about the quarter life crisis whereby they're not able now to, to determine. Mm -hmm. For them, it's not about uh, retirement, it's about the, because they talk about you only live once. But we are advising them that living once today will also require you to live once tomorrow. That's right. And that means that you need to have the right arsenal for you now to propel yourself into the future. Good. Yes. Wanyama, thank you very much for your time this morning and, of course, for sharing with us the, uh, your insight around uh, the pension industry in Kenya. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad. Well, our conversation this morning in the first hour of Bits Check has revolved around pension, how to save for um, your um, uh, uh, future, and, of course, uh, what you need to do um, in a bit to ensure that you maximize on the returns around uh, uh, pension.